International Incident Number One. Jack Packer, from whatever corner of the world you may be in at the moment, you're hereby being summoned to London in a matter of the gravest expediency. Signed, the 21 Old Men of 10 Gramercy Park. I Love Adventure. The American Broadcasting Company presents a new Carlton E. Morse production. Featuring the international escapades of Jack Packard, Doc Long, and Reggie York. Tonight's incident is entitled... The China Coast Incident. That's the message I received at the American Consul's office in Port Said at 7 o'clock yesterday morning. Jack Packard, from whatever corner of the world you may be in at the moment... You're hereby being summoned to London in a matter of the gravest expediency. Signed the 21 old men of 10 Gramercy Park. There it was. And here I am on the last lap of my journey up from Liverpool to London. I could have flown right into Croydon Field and been there by this time, except for one of those grisly, greasy black fogs of London. However, I'll be there in good time, even so. And now, who are the 21 old men of 10 Gramercy Park? Who are they? I've never seen any mention of them in the papers. They certainly have had no rumor value in official circles, no conversational value in social circles, no scandal value in high places. And yet, when I gave some slight indication of putting the radiogram down as a practical joke from either Doc Long or Reggie York, wherever they might be in the world today, suddenly there was pressure all about me. A gentle hint from this quarter, a subtle warning from that quarter an over-eagerness to help me get on my way to London. Nobody ever came out and said, I know the 21 old men of 10 Gramercy Park and you'd be wise to obey them. Nobody even mentioned the 21 old men. But it took me less than an hour after I got this message to get the idea and bestir myself. And here I am, plunging through the dripping, grimy tunnel of fog only minutes from Piccadilly Station. I wish Doc Long and Reggie York were waiting at the end of this trip. I even wish I had the faintest notion where they are. We broke up the A-1 detective agency out in Hollywood when Pearl Harbor came along. Reggie made a beeline for the Royal Air Force back in England. I'd get cheerful messages by way of returning American ferrying pilots, and then I lost him. Doc Long got himself a job with the Flying Tigers over in China. Then he became a P-38 fighter pilot in the last phase of the war. Then he just fell out of sight. I'd always meant to get over that way one of these days and put a tracer on Doc, but up to now I've been chivied about by American intelligence until I haven't been able to call my soul my own. The fact that I've been completely released from all intelligence work to meet the 21 old men in itself is one of the marvels of modern times. Well, I get my luggage. Train's slowing down. Major Jack Packer? Uh Uh-oh, here it is. Major Jack Packer? Major Jack? Yeah, what is it? You're Major Jack Packer? That's right. Very good, Major. We're entering the station. I shall have the pleasure of conducting you to your destination. Is that necessary? Oh, watch yourself, sir. Come along, sir. There's no time for conversation. Headed straight for the lion's den at once, sir. This way, please. Did I hear you correctly? Did you say lion's den? That you did. The lion's den, alias 10 Gramercy Park. as I go, sir. Oh? Go right in, sir. Make yourself comfortable. Uh, walk right into the lion's den, huh? It's all right, sir. Walk right in. Bye, sir. Amazing. A regular cathedral of a room. Two, three stories of the ceiling, dimly lit by the tall, leaded, dome-like windows in which the color and pageantry of the ages have been done by some exquisite artist. Tapestries on the wall, period furniture... In richness and luxury known only to a fabulous oriental monarch someplace down the corridors of history. I, what's this? 
Suddenly, before my eyes, a great tapestry which covers the whole of one end of the room is rolling back. And there before my eyes is the greatest mirror I've ever seen. Forty feet across, sixty feet to the ceiling. A flawless mirror reflecting every item of color and beauty all over again. And there I am, repeating myself in the glass. Hello, a voice. To you, the west wall is a mirror. To the 21 old men seated in the room behind it, the west wall is a window through which we not only enjoy the great beauty of the room you stand in, but can examine you with infinite care so that we may know you from this time on, but without you knowing anything of us. Are you able to hear me? We hear you. Why am I here? You are needed. Who are you? That you will never know. Then I want to get out of here. Wait. There's no use. For all I know, you may be a criminal gang. You may be the instigators of war. You could be anything. With as much money and power at your disposal as this setup indicates you have. Yes, we have money and power. Only official government should be allowed you to... You have been a citizen of the world for a great many years. In your young manhood, you studied to be a physician. Well, here I... Oh, yes. We know that. We know why you were never able to complete your medical education. Now, just a minute. That is not meant as a threat nor a warning. Because when we complete this interview, you are free to go as though you'd never been called in. We simply want you to understand that we know everything there is to know about you. You were a free booter in South America. You and your later companions, Doc Long and Reggie York, were members of the Chinese National Army when the first Japanese incident took place years ago. You had a detective agency in Hollywood. That's right. During the war, you have been with United States Intelligence. We know your work there, and it is because of your wide knowledge, not only of formal negotiation, but of rough and tumble undercover fighting, that you have been assigned to us at our request. By U.S. Intelligence? Yes. Now, that should be good enough, but I want to know more. You know that in this world of chaos, which is our heritage out of World War II, there is banditry and piracy and madness abroad in every land. Yeah. You know that much of it is too delicate, too touchy for the official government of any nation to handle. A formal government could plunge its country into new wars overnight if it even looked in certain directions today. But much can be done undercover, beneath the surface. Much can be done by 21 old men, each representing the country of his nativity. We are men who would do for the people of the world what their own governments know should be done, but cannot do, because their hands are tied. Well, in that case, count me in. That is well. Sir James, will you give Major Packard his first assignment? There is a man somewhere in French Indochina, in the area of Saigon, who is a great man, a fine scientist. He is either a prisoner of international gangsters, or he is a man in hiding. He has the knowledge of a destructive force, which placed in the hands of the wrong people would mean murder and slaughter for half the world. He is a friend of democratic people. We want him, and we want his scientific knowledge. If we cannot have it, it must not fall into the wrong hands at any cost. The man's name? Dr. Alfred Wentz. When can I leave? A plane takes off for the Orient in exactly one hour. You will be aboard it. In this pea soup fog? London's pea soup fog will be one of the very minor obstacles of this assignment. Step outside. There is a batsman waiting to deliver you to your mission. The refugee liner Viking, out of Saigon, with its load of frightened, nondescript humanity... Gleam from the chaotic whirlpool of Indochina hate and strife was in the China Sea, 300 miles off the island of Hong Kong. On this last lap of my assignment, 
After seven hectic and nerve-shattering days in the back alleys of Saigon and four days at sea, I was on the promenade deck consoling a good-looking Scandinavian girl. <laughs> Take it easy, honey. Take it easy. Oh, but Mr. Packer... Listen, Frida, anything can happen on this screwball ferry boat. Oh, but there was a shot... Chinese firecracker. Somebody let off a pop gun. Let the bridge worry about it. That piece of paper I handed you tonight at dinner... You got it? Yeah. One word. Pirates. Yes. One of the evil ones is aboard this ship. One of their cleverest and brightest. I noticed him the second day out. And so you think he's after someone on this tub, huh? I do not think, Mr. Jack Packard. I know. Who? Me. And how does a good-looking young woman know so much about piracy in the China Sea? Because I have escaped from them just in time. If I had not escaped when I did, I would be on their secret island hideout now. Well, that sounds fine. So my favorite gang is trailing you, the girl who was the toast of the Malay Peninsula. You know so much. Just what does this monkey look like? He is tall, heavy set with gray hair, and a scar on his left cheek. I tell you, Mr. Packard, he is after me. I'm afraid to go out of my cabin after I've seen him. You know his name? Yes. Houseman. Yeah, you're cooking. I almost believe you. Poor guy whose papers he's traveling on is dead in a Saigon alley. But free to take it from me. They're not trailing you. They're after bigger stuff. So? Then what I hear is true. Dr. Wentz is on this ship. Do you think so? Yes. All Indochina boiled with the news of his escape from the enemy's clutches, and everybody knows you helped him escape. Okay, why did I help him? <laughs> you ask me, Mr. Packer. All Saigon knew that also. Dr. Wentz is the inventor of the most important formula developed since the war. His formula is the most deadly force yet conceived. Wentz, I... Go to the head of the class, baby. Now do you think these pirate roughnecks are chasing you? I think first Dr. Wentz, then you, then me. We are all in this together. Maybe you got something there. Maybe you are on our team. Believe me, Mr. Packard, I am. I am. If you're right about this enemy agent prowling around here, we got no time to waste. You'd have come with me. But where? To my cabin. But if it should happen that you're on the wrong team, I can be very mean to little girls, especially little dames from the Saigon underworld. A second while I turn on the light. Yeah. Get in here, quick. Lock that door. Oh, no, George, look at the Yeah, somebody was looking for something and really wrecked the joint. Dr. Wentz! Hey, doctor, open the door. What is true, Dr. Wentz is with you. You wouldn't know about that, would you? If I thought you were holding me up there on deck while this mug was working oh, on me. No, it. no, I swear it, no. Oh, I'll figure that one myself. Stand back so I can crash down this door. <laughs> Oh, no. Doctor, they really must you oh, up. Oh, the wrong man. What in towels, quick. This is weak. It's so weak. Doctor, doctor, can you hear me? Doctor. Hey, it's me, Packard. Can you hear me? Look at his feet and his fingers. Sure, he's been tortured. Must have thought they killed him and then ripped up the cabin looking for the formula. Packard. Hey, news. Take it easy, Doctor. Take it easy. Just give me a token and answer to my question. Just nod or shake your head, can you? Okay. Oh, poor man. Here, I suit his firm. Doctor, how many of them were there? One? Was that all? Did they did they find your formula? No? Well, couldn't you have found it when you were unconscious? He was shaking his head. Hey, yes. carefully, you're hurting him. I am being as gentle as I can. Okay, Doctor. Then where is it? Can you tell me? Mm. Oh, they sure worked you over, didn't they? I'll take care of that Jolly Roger for you. Don't worry. You want your gun? You don't want my gun, Doc. You... Doctor. Yeah. There's a good guy gone. Must I hurt plenty right there. You see him try to grab for my gun. It's a great Dr. Wentz. A guy like that. It... it is too terrible. You better get out of here and go back to your own cabin. If that butcher didn't find what he was after, he'd be coming back. Oh, but I, I cannot go alone. Okay, okay. I'll take you to the cabin. But stay parked there, please. I gotta get back here and find that formula. Oh, yes, Mr. Packard. Anything to help. Call me, Jack, will you, sweetheart? That Mr. Stuff gets me down. <laughs> uh, I guess I'm licked. Why didn't the doctor tell me where the formula was hidden when I asked him to so many times? One thing I can do, I'll put a dragnet around this tub when we reach Hong Kong that these parts will never get through. Well, I guess this recipe for the super explosive just isn't in here. 
Maybe it's in my little joint next door. Sorry to interrupt your little soliloquy, my Hamlet-minded friend. Why, you... Keep your hand away from that gun. I don't want to shoot you yet. Later, yes, but not yet. How'd you get in here, Houseman? <laughs> that charming mademoiselle, when she told you my name. That's right. Behind that wardrobe is a door into the next cabin. I arranged most carefully to get that cabin. The poor fellow who had it found it quite impossible to... To leave Saigon. Well, that's one right guess I made. Just so you won't be tempted to reach for that gun packer. Unbuckle the shoulder holster without touching the gun. Drop it to your feet. Hmm? Now, kick it with your foot. Ah, splendid, splendid. Now you may sit down if you wish. Thanks. Do I take off my shoes and socks so you can give me the regulation hot foot, or do you go for the splinters under the fingernail routine? <laughs> no, no. I have a better argument to use with you. I'm listening, but I don't hear so well. Well, it would be most unfortunate if you do not hear, for you and a lot of other people. I believe you can find that formula if you want to badly enough, and I think I can make it very important for you to find it. If I didn't know you were a bunch of waterfront scum and wharf rats, I'd think you were drunk. So I say no and you shoot me, is that right? You say no and I shoot you. You say yes and find the formula. Yeah, and I get to join you and become Captain Kidd himself. No, 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 I still shoot you. But if you don't find that formula, the 1,100 passengers on the ship will die tonight. That's ridiculous. You think so, hmm? Once I get my hands on the formula, you don't think for one minute I will continue on the ship into Hong Kong, do you? You're to be taken off by another ship? A uh, submarine. You say pirates have a submarine? Is that so amazing? Brother, I gotta hand it to you, Tuffy. You play rough. Well, what is your decision there, Packer? Well, looks like it's heads you win, tails I lose, I guess, if there's a thousand one hundred people to think about. One thousand one hundred people on a refugee ship as hostages... Your kind is always making a sort of specialty of hostages, aren't you? We have found them useful, thank you. Well, that's one word for it, but skip it. Tell me this. Suppose I make an honest effort and don't find the formula. Why should all these people die tonight? Because the formula is on this ship somewhere, probably in these two rooms. If the Vents formula cannot be found, the ship must be destroyed. You see, we do not intend that the organized free countries should have it. Organized free countries? Yes. We are against all people who live under a formal government. We are at war with all of you, although you may not realize it yet. You don't say. Well, what's it to be? Well, if it were a question of my skin alone, I, I'd tell you where to go. Yes, I'm sure of that. But you know I can't let 1,100 men, women, and children burn and drown. Then you agree? Yes, yes, I agree, but I'm humiliated <laughs> I thought I was good, but you outfigured and outmaneuvered me into an impossible situation. Uh, Packer, you don't know the perfection of our planning. Everything is provided for. Yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued by this submarine business. Precisely. A rendezvous at 12 o'clock tonight. There will be a moon. You even you... thought of that? Wonderful. Joshua made the sun stand still, and your boss makes the moon shine. Do eh? not speak lightly of our leader. Forget it. If everything goes well, you get the formula... The sub takes you off and this boat gets the green light. That is the plan. But if I arrive at the sub without the formula, the ship will be sunk without a trace or a survivor. Yes, but suppose something happened to you so you couldn't signal the sub. Then their orders are to sink the ship without warning. How about that? You think of everything. Yes, yes. Now, you have only a little more than an hour and a half to find the formula. I can tell you something that might help you. What's that? I have already searched this cabin, but it may be in a very tiny space. We learned that Vance had reduced his papers to microfilm. The man who did it for him confessed. We had him shot, of course. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Every little bit helps. Now, let's see. A roll of microfilm could go in almost any... Stop. Time. What's that? Jack! Jack! <coughs> ah, you had to take a gander to pretty dame. Maybe that'll teach you super gangsters to keep your minds on your work, eh? It's okay, Frida, come in. Oh, are you all right, Jack? Oh, you... you killed him? No, no, I'm saving him for hanging. Hand me the straps off the suitcases, will you? Yes, Mr. Pat. Oh, all right, Jack. Go see the captain, Frida, and no one else. Tell him to send a couple of husky sailors down here to watch this rat. As soon as they get here, I'll go up on the bridge and give them the payoff. 
and say nothing of what's going on down here except to him. All right, Jack. I go. There. Yeah, that ought to hold you. I won't gag you because I can hardly wait to hear what you say when you open those big baby blue eyes. Mm. Ah, here you come, out of the nowhere, into the here. You fool. Now all of us will have to die on account of you. Relax, sweetheart, relax. The unexpected certainly throws you Superman, doesn't it? That's the story, Captain. It's 10.30 now. How far from Hong Kong are we? 250 miles out. About 80 minutes flight by plane. It's going to be close, Skipper. Oh, here's the radio operator. Okay, Sparks, here's a message. Get it out to the Royal Naval Air Station at Kowloon in hurry. Yes, sir. I'd like to suggest, Skipper, that you hold general quarters and lifeboat drill at 11.45. Those planes don't get here. We're in for it. No use telling the passengers until we have to. Right. Mr. Vogel, will you see that's done? Mr. Anderson. Yes, Captain. Signal the engine room to reduce speed to six knots. Aye, aye, sir. Just a second, uh, hold it, Anderson. Yes, sir. Well, what is it, Packard? Skipper, I think you ought to maintain speed and course as it is. Why should I risk my ship and passengers to keep a date with the submarine? I don't think the sub is waiting for us, Skipper. I think she's been trailing us. Any change in speed or course without a signal from their agent aboard would really gum the works. Yeah, you have something there. Mr. Anderson, maintain speed and course. Aye, aye, sir. Well, well, here comes the moon, just as Captain Kidd ordered. Nothing to do now but wait and hope those planes get here in time. Eleven o'clock. Plenty of clouds now. Our human sharks are going to be awful sore about that. Yes, radio? What is it? Miss it, sir. Mm-hmm. Royal Naval Air Station. Planes away, 2242. Good luck. 2242. That's 18 minutes before 11. Only hope they got plenty of tailwind. Mr. Mate! Mr. Mate, what is it? What's going on here? Lifeboat drill, madam. Wear your life vest, please. Oh, it's ridiculous waking us up at 11.30 for a lifeboat drill. It's outrageous. Might as well stay up for the rest of the night. Well, it I wouldn't be so it. bad if they'd open the bar. Here's number three lifeboat, officer. Port side forward, madam. Well, which is port side, right or left? Left side, going forward. Oh, why don't sailors speak English? Almost the zero hour. Yeah. You got a sailor who speaks German, Captain? Yes, why? I want him to relieve the two men guarding Hausman. I don't get it. I want him to say something to Hausman in German and then let nature take its course. Mr. Anderson, tell Keller to step out here on the bridge. Yes, sir. I still don't understand. You will, you will in a minute. Here's Keller, sir. Say, Keller, I want you to relieve two men who are guarding a prisoner in my cabin. Mr. Anderson will show you where it is. Yes, sir. When you're alone with him, say something to him in German, like, uh, something like, if I turn you loose, will you take me with you? If he agrees, and believe me, brother, he will, then unstrap him and let him scram. What's the matter, Packard? Are you insane? No, Skipper. It's 11.45. If that sub surfaces and doesn't get a signal and code from Hausman, it'll torpedo us without warning. And we don't have the code. I get you. And if I know my pirate history, they'll be nervous. They'll want their signal at exactly 12 o'clock or they'll start shooting. Our planes might be late. The sub will send a boat to take Hausman off, and I want that extra time. Yes, Keller, carry out Mr. Packard's instructions. Yes, sir. Almost 12 o'clock. Yeah. I'm positive that Hausman had tried to save his own hide. Here comes Keller. I did what you said, sir. He ducked into the next cabin, grabbed the flashlight, and ran out into the corridor. Good. Before he ran out, he gave me this for myself, sir. Well, you keep it. You deserve it. I don't think I do, sir. What is it? An American one-dollar bill with a swastika stamped on it. He said to show it in the Hong Kong Bazaar and I will be given safe conduct to their headquarters. How about that? Clock, Captain. There's the signal. Off the starboard beam. Yeah, now watch for the answer. There it is. Forward on B deck. Let's get a couple of men on B deck. Don't grab Hausman, but don't let him get out of sight. Uh uh-uh. uh. There's their searchlight. They got their deck gun manned. They're 
firing across our bow. Signal the engine room to stop the engine, Mr. Anderson. Yes, sir. Ahoy, the Viking! He knows us all right. You will heave too. I am sending a boat aboard. Any resistance, and you will be sunk. Well, where are those planes? They're putting a rubber boat off the sub starboard. Yeah, talk about piracy on the high seas. Here comes the boarding party. It won't be long now. Hey, listen. I don't hear anything. Me either. But it was a nice thought, Skipper. Quiet. Planes. Yeah. Planes. The pirates hear them, too. There goes their searchlight. Yeah, where are you going? Down to B deck. There's one shark I want to take care of personally. Hey, where is he, Keller? Over there. Climbing over the rail. Oh, no, he doesn't. <laughs> he jumped. Did you get him? I don't know. That last shot missed fire. Something's dropping. Oh, look. Where? There it is. It's as bright as day. It's the boat. There You'll never is. make it. The sun's going to crash, time. Too late. Here comes the first step, John. That got her, I think. Yes. Yes, they got her. Yes. They got the rubber boat, too. Great down. Nearly at the Royal Navy Station, Jack. Ah, uh, what's that? <laughs> I say we are nearly at Kowloon. Yeah, so we are, and I hate to check in. Poor old Dr. Wentz. Uh, I sure fluffed this one. Oh, everybody says once, Jack. Yeah, even this gat of mine misfired on me once. I... Hey, wait a minute. What are you going to do with that gun? Why didn't I think of that before? Dr. Wentz wasn't the kind of man to kill himself. When he reached for my gun, he was trying to tell me. Here it is. A little cartridge that didn't go off. And the bullet comes out. And there it is. The microfilm and the formula for Wentzite. Kowloon. Kowloon, next up. Oh, Jack. This night in Hong Kong may well be something for you to remember. Is that a promise? Perhaps. This Oriental Sing Song Palace isn't a bad starting place. How about another one of those little green drinks with shaved Jack, ice? That man, the little Chinese in uniform over there, he's looking at you. He's coming to our table. Oh, that's great. Oh, my pardon, you, Major Jaco Parker? Check. Uh, radiogram for you. Please sign here. Thanks. Here. No, come, sir. Thank you. Excuse me. It... It is important. The London Bombay Air Express will be robbed in midair on Sunday next. Report to London immediately. Sign the 21 old men of 10 Gramercy Park. But not tonight. Just this one night. How about that? Not even one night in Hong Kong with the girlfriend. And how do you rob a mail plane in midair? Will you tell me that? You have just heard I Love Adventure, a Carlton E. Morse production featuring Michael Raffetto as Jack Packer. Next week, The Great Airmail Robbery, an epic adventure 23,000 feet in the stratosphere. Frida was played by Gene Bates. Hausman was played by John McIntyre. The spokesman by Everett Glass. The captain by Russell Thorson. Others in the cast included Tom Collins, Earl Lee, Janet Logan, and Harry Lang. The China Sea Incident was written by Carlton E. Morse with John Paul Schofield. Organ by Rex Corey. Your announcer, Dresser Dahlstedt. Now, a listening reminder. For an unusual story, one you'll never forget, don't miss The Clock, 
The clock will be heard at its new time starting tonight over this same ABC station. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.